Good evening. My name is Tony Collins, and I'm one of the pastors here at Berks United Methodist Church. We welcome you to this 11 o'clock Christmas Eve service. If you're like me, this is one of your favorite services throughout the Christmas, the Advent and Christmas season. And we welcome you here tonight as we come to hear the Word of God in lessons and to sing praises to God through carols. Reverend Beth and Reverend Rachel and I are here to share the lessons with you. And we have several great opportunities for you to sing along at home if you would like, or just to sit back and listen to the glory of music that has been, been written over many years to celebrate and praise our God. I do have two announcements. One is that we traditionally take up an offering on Christmas Eve, and it's, uh, it's one of my favorite offerings as well. 100% of the proceeds from the offering tonight will go to the Helping Hands Fund here at the church. If you would like to give an offering for that, it goes to help people in our area uh, with very specific um, types of things that will help make their life better in a very difficult time. You can do this online by going to burks.org and then look for the place where you can give. And there is a, a drop-down list, and on there is Helping Hands Fund. So we encourage you to do that. Or you can send a contribution to the church. And we thank you for your faithfulness that will help people that are your neighbors and maybe your friends here in this, in this time of the year. I also want to remind you that we are having a drive-in Sunday service on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. You can stay in your car and be nice and warm and participate in the service. Or you can watch online um, and we can give you the information for how to do that. You can find it at berks.org or you can go to our Facebook page and it will tell you how to participate in that. But for now, it's, it's late in the evening on Christmas Eve. It's the time for us to take a deep breath and be quiet and still and listen to what God has been telling us is his story for years and years and years.
Good evening. I'm excited that you're worshiping with us here this evening. My name is Beth Sullivan, and I'm one of the other pastors here. And I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer at this time. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for all that you have given us. In this evening, as we gather wherever we are to worship you, we are grateful for the gift of the Christ child who comes this night. We know that there's messiness in that scene and there is messiness in our lives and yet you are still moving and acting, working through us and in us. And God, we pray that you will help us to see where you are in everything around us. We pray that you will be with those who are out now in the cold this evening and be with those who are warm in their homes as they prepare for a different kind of gathering tomorrow. We pray that your spirit will be loud and your love will be felt, your peace will be known, and your hope will be proclaimed throughout the world. We ask these things in your name as we pray together as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will have our Advent wreath lighting by Joe and Jessica Brackett. Here are the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be, and it shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We stand on the brink of God's time and light again the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. We light the Christ candle to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus, the light coming into the world. Loving God, come and shine your light in the world. And now, hear this reading from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 15 and 17 through 19. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, you told, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, 
Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. You are dust and to dust you shall return. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pastor Rachel, tonight we'll be joining in Genesis 22, 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
the ninth chapter of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He shall establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts has done this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
reading from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth from me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born to Born to give a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. A reading from Luke 1, 26 through 35 and 38. In the sixth month, the Gabriel, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph and of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said, How can this be to the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, 
Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar, Augustus, that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own town. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. Stars in the 
from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a great multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, he said. 
Here, reading from Matthew chapter 2, 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When the king Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. When Herod secretly learned secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring word so that I may also pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had been seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a Go tell it on the mountain. 
mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born the shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Our final scripture this evening comes from John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to read Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. There's a pause there that we usually miss. We just read the story and we go right along saying that the time had come and then the baby's born when really we need to pause because somewhere in there is all the truth sandwiched between those two verses, verse 6 and verse 7, is the reality of Mary being in labor and her agony and a lot of blood and pain and a lot of things happen before the baby arrives. This year, this story should speak to us in a lot of ways. It's a time when people are suffering, when people are looking for answers, when people feel completely alone and out of place. It's even a year of the census. So this speaks to us in a lot of different ways. 
even back in those times when the Romans wanted a census, the, the purpose wasn't to find out how many people they were so they could be represented or so that they could be helped in certain ways. It was to make sure they got all of their taxes. And they didn't count the women. And they didn't count the children. Today, there have even been controversies in our nation about whether we're going to count all the folks and whether everybody counts or not, whether everybody's in the right place or not, whether everybody is a child of God in our eyes. But it's not our eyes that we should be looking through. It's the eyes of God. The eyes of God that look upon us and see us in all of our hurt and all of our pain and all of our labor. A child of the eyes of God which see us all with love. A pastor in another church that, that I pay attention to last year during Advent had a prayer and I wrote it down because I thought it was a great prayer but I thought it really belonged not in Advent but it belongs right here on Christmas Eve so tonight I offer it to you it's very simple you can even write it down I'll give you time the prayer is here I am Lord here you are. Here we are together. Amen. I wore this stole because I've worn it every year on Christmas Eve for 20 something years. It was made for me by a very special lady whose name is Mary Carol Horn. She was the accompanist at a church that I served in the late 90s. If there was anybody who could uh, compare to Roy, our pianist, it might have been Mary Carol. But she made this not during a time of great joy, not during a time when life was easy. She made it during a time when her husband was in the hospital for an extended period of time. He had a surgery that was supposed to be fairly routine. But he just didn't recover from the surgery very well. And he went from one hospital to another that was even larger. And, and he was there for weeks and weeks. And I remember this because it was on Christmas Eve many years ago that we arranged for us at our church to be having communion at the same time that a, a chaplain in the hospital where he was went to his room and offered them communion, and we were connected by a phone line. We couldn't be together. We couldn't see each other even back then. Not through FaceTime or Zoom or any of those things, but we could hear the voices. We could hear his voice and his daughter and family that were in Virginia could hear his voice. It was beautiful because we knew that we were connected not because we were in the same place, but we knew we were connected. And at the same time, we were proclaiming our belief in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tonight, we have three pastors here in the church. 
and only one person is a congregation when there should be 100, maybe 200 here tonight. And yet we're not able to be that way. We're not able to look at each other and touch each other, but we can still proclaim our love for our Savior, Jesus, who calls us to something really extraordinary, who reminds us that, that it's not just us who's waiting, it's not just us who are, who are trying to find the right things in our life. In Romans, the eighth chapter, Paul wrote, for I consider that the sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the people of God. The whole creation is waiting for us to be revealed. And in verse 22 it says, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our, of our body. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. We don't see the end result yet. We want to, and sometimes we even use as an excuse not to believe. We can look around and say, look at all the hopelessness in the world. Look at all the sin. Look at all the hurt that's in the world. Sometimes even created by us the people of God. And we use that as an excuse for not believing. But hope that is seen is not hope, Paul says. But why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it. Wait for it with perseverance. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. As we traditionally do, we're now going to light a candle. If you have a candle handy at home, I, I invite you maybe to turn the lights down a little bit and find a candle and light it as we sing probably the favorite hymn of all the church, Silent Night.
God so loved the world. And God was so loved then by Mary in all of her brokenness. To think of God as being so loved, to, to think of ourselves as being so loved, to think of the other person as being so loved then you can say, here I am, Lord. Here you are. Here we are together. And it is, and it is enough. Amen. Go in peace, and may God's word bring you peace this day and every day to come. Amen.